All right, Coffee with Gaz here with Janine Swa. Yes. So, <laughs> full disclosure, you are my favorite. You're already top five, right? Because I don't think I'm just... No, I know, I know. You can't show favorites. No, and because and, 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 <laughs> you're here, right? But appreciate you doing this. But you are my top five favorite follower. Thank you. Right? Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, we connected. It's probably been like a year. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit more. It was during COVID. Um, during COVID. And I love like this because we did connect initially through social, right? Yes. And I think the intent always, the intent of this platform, these forums is to do this. Yeah. So you're a, a prime example and, and I consider a success for me doing this for be able to, to really further connect with you and yeah. continue to discuss. But um, not gonna lie, you, you bring the energy, especially, <laughs> especially you do Monday, Mondays. It's like, I gotta take it. I'm going to take a deep breath, right? I know. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, it's so much, but I just got to let it, like, you got to let it flow. Well, let, let me ask you flow. like that, but you've been doing it consistently. And again, mm-hmm. you do a great job. Thank so you. um, what got you into that? Like what got you kind of like bringing that, that Monday motivation? And I do it on Sundays too. I know. I that. Honestly. So that's a great question. It all started on COVID. Like everybody, all my friends were really depressed and I'm genuinely an early riser and I love Mondays. I just feel like it's a fresh start. Like you can, there's just like so much that you could do. (laughs) So I wake up like dancing and like, you know, sometimes not every day, of course, but like most Mondays I go with the mindset like, all right, let's do this. So during COVID, all my friends like were like depressed and everybody was just kind of sad. Yeah. So I started randomly with like a 15 second like, hey, guys, I love you. Like you're going to crush it, blah, blah, blah. And then got a good response. So I was like, OK, like, let's try it again. So I did it again. Good response. Did it consistently for a couple weeks. The one week I didn't do it, I literally like 10 people hit Called me out. up and they were like, what the F? Like, where's my motivation? What I are need you, you doing? I need you. And that's when I realized that it was like a thing. And I was like, OK, wow. And then kept getting more messages. And it was like people sharing really personal things with me. And so some days it's hard because if I'm really tired, I don't want to transfer like tired energy to people. Right. But I try my best to push through because of those messages that, you know, that people send me. Well, I, the the thing about it, and again, it's difficult to do this a lot, right, mm-hmm. is you come across and you are super authentic. And I, that's why I love the video, right? Most people, mm-hmm. I think, don't take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously photos, we can edit them. You can spend. Right, of course. I mean, how many times can you edit? You can like in multiple situations. but. Right. Video speaks so much. I, I encourage everybody in here as our staff. Like I know. I mean, I'm gonna use an example. Look at Janine. Like get like, oh but it gets God. uncomfortable. Right. Oh my God. Right. So it's, it's like it gets uncomfortable. But what, what I like about doing it is just that one take. Just do it and just roll with it. You know. It's so true. Sometimes when I overthink it, I'll just not post because I'm like, this isn't gonna be genuine. Like what? Like what is the intent behind it? And I have to do a reset sometimes because I'm like. Am I trying to say what people want to hear? And when that when that happens, that's when I refuse to pose because I don't want it to be like inauthentic or. Um, yeah, you're super super aware of that. Yes, very aware because I'm one. I'm a Virgo, and two, I'm Type A personality, so I have a tendency to overthink. If I ever overthink it, I just won't post. Well, look, look, that's a huge self awareness aspect there too. Oh my God, therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one thing you do extremely well and what I want to talk about, like you, you, you're you out there, you put yourself out there, but you're connecting a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to ask you about this this new role you're in, um, helping founders, right, connect mm-hmm. with each other. Right. Um, and we talked a bit about off camera. Look, me, it almost feels like the term founder is a, one of those things that I don't want to get put in a box or maybe right. misunderstood. Can you kind of get into that a little bit? Yeah. So I have always been, I'm a rebel. I told you that earlier. Like I'm a rebel when it comes to labels, when it comes to people telling me what I should or shouldn't do, just because my parents have always been like, you pretty much are capable of anything. Just be mindful of how you move through it. And so when I got involved in like the startup tech scene, I learned and realized that, <clears throat> excuse me, that a lot of people who ad- who identified themselves as founders were of a particular group and it was like almost an exclusive club Th- that's the mm-hmm. the initial feeling right for not for people aren't taking that next step yeah and i say f it um right. screw it don't like don't you don't have to be of a certain revenue type you don't have to be in tech you don't have to be running a high growth startup in order to be considered a founder and my co-founder and i megan when we launched our concept previously think global we started a movement of black female founders 
founders of just making it more inclusive. Like anybody who has a vision of building a really great company can be a founder because if I'm excluding this group, I'm then telling them that you are not capable of doing X, Y, Z in the future. So that's why I just kind of like if you're a, if you think that you're a founder, you're a founder. If you don't, you don't. Cool. Right. right. Now, let me ask you, like getting into that. And have you noticed in that scene, what's kind of one of the the biggest obstacles, right? I mean, mm -hmm. obviously raising capital must be the first right. one. Um, but also, you know, and, and I, I take I put myself in a box where I have two business partners. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's helped me through the last 15, 16 years be able to balance ideas off, right? Yeah. Being kind of on your own, you, you know, you think you're crazy. Are you crazy? Right. Like, like where, where is that, that support system um, for people to kind of help you as well, right? Mm -hmm. Is that where we're at? Like, I mean, you, are you kind of, as far as the connecting goes, it's, it's almost like a like an intentional therapy group? <laughs> kind of, but not really. So I'm more, I used to be in that role. And then I found that it was a lot emotionally for me to take that on and to take on that responsibility of making sure that everybody got everything that they needed right. because I was then not pouring into my own cup and I was exhausted and therefore couldn't be effective. Right now, my role, I'm working on scaling myself through my content. And the three barriers that I found were the most prominent or challenging for founders, especially diverse founders, are lack of knowledge, know-how, lack of direct resources, and then lack of social capital network. And so a lack of access to capital, yes, that's an issue, but there are like problems within that problem and so that's where i've positioned myself to be able to be to be able to become a solution to each of those so for the lack of knowledge know-how i'm connecting them to the information that i create via right. my videos for the social capital network i'm then connecting them to my partners that we funder at florida funders and that right to start and then for the direct and indirect resources i'm providing that along with my educational tech so I sell that to say that's how I'm trying to be intentional about connecting people without feeling so much where I feel like I have to hold their hand throughout the entire process. Right. No, and that's not fair to you either, right? Right. That Which, pressure. And, I, and I'm like a coddler to my core, but it's taken self-awareness and me having to take a step back to be like, I can't be everything to everybody. Right. I have to be what I'm best at, which is connecting them to information and to people. I mean, I see, obviously the, with no for no limitations now using the internet social mm -hmm. media that is that the biggest driver as far as the initial connections because you you're not from south florida originally right no. you're from the west the yes. west coast mm -hmm. west coast of, of florida so um social media and me connecting with founders has been like my best friend and as you said getting uncomfortable i used to hate posting online like everybody's like what i'm like no <laughs> it's legit i, I get i'm like i don't like that much you. attention i believe you um, I'm the same way. Oh my God. It's like, like I, I, got, I, I tell people, like, I want to be invited, but then I don't want to go. Exactly. <laughs> but I still want to be invited. Like, tell me you love, just, just tell me you love me. And that's I, I, me. You know? <laughs> I don't have to be like on the stage, but then I realize again, my position of not a lot of people are this aware of like this problem. So I had to put myself out there because it's bigger than me. And so now I've been able to leverage social media and connect with founders literally all over the world. And I'm like, wait, yesterday a girl from Sydney was like, Australia was like, hey, I saw that you're doing a beta test. I'm like, girl, how did you even find me? And that's the power of social. That's, that's, that's some, I love the fact that you're, you're just exploding, taking advantage of what's there. Mm -hmm. So many people don't understand the power of these type of forums yeah. and, and the amount of work it takes into it. Oh so, God, I mean, and work. you make it look easy. So I'm glad Ooh. that you kind of throw it out. I'm glad you go out there and tell that it, it is hard because mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I was I never used to really buy into it. It's very anti-social media. I remember we talked about we talked that, about when that we until first I met. until I was, and then it, and then it almost became um, an investment that we made as a company that had to force me to get uncomfortable. And it's so it's such a good investment. Like this team that you have, I know that you guys just hit a milestone on it. Insta. <laughs> Shout out to you. Um, but the team that you have, I mean, you're, they're telling your story. They're telling the story of JAG. And that's what people are pulling on. It's not like, hey, buy this. Hey, buy this. No, it's the brand and the story and the fact that you actually give a shit about people. Right. That's the most important thing, I think. No, I, I, and that's exactly where we're going for. I appreciate that. And that's I why mean, I love you guys. Uh, right? I mean, yeah, we talk about <laughs> Insurance, I mean, it'll take like five seconds to fall asleep, right? I mean, it's we're we're very self aware of that, and I and I I, I really, you know, as far as like getting to know you and like the, I wanted to ask you like, does your strategy change a little bit as far as like LinkedIn versus Instagram? I mean, mm -hmm. cause, right? Because I know that's a two two different kind of like yes. a, a and B apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of decipher like 
how you use both. Oh my gosh, I'm not nearly as active on Instagram as I am on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, so I had a friend, I think it was last year, he was like, look, LinkedIn will give you love if you stay consistent with it. And since staying consistent, I mean, you know, since staying consistent, I've the traction has been crazy. And so my strategy for business, and like Juan was saying, because I'm B2B, I'm focusing more on LinkedIn, but I'm still getting some leads from Instagram. Right. So right. it just it it varies. I'm definitely way more consistent on LinkedIn though. I post at least once a day or like five times a week at minimum. Yeah, I, I feel like the the there's an overall stigma also on LinkedIn as far as it being, you know, and I know it's changed over the years, Buttoned right? Up. Buttoned up. Buttoned Be very professional. There's also, you know, a lot of people that work for, for corporate companies. They, they, you know, everyone's on there. That's mm -hmm. why I love it too. Same. Right? Everyone's watching, just not everybody's participating. Very true. So those who participate obviously get take, take advantage mm -hmm. of. Like, you no, know, it's true. Like, even with the algorithms, I, I believe every time or most of the times I go on LinkedIn, I see, I see your stuff. And it's kind of oh yeah, I do. Yeah, you're great. on, you're on there, you're on there. I do see it, I do see it. Which it's it's great. That but it's that LinkedIn's really changed, and being mm -hmm. able to like you're able to, to to take advantage of everybody watching but not participating, so your voice is even bigger. Right, and LinkedIn, I think. At the beginning, I was like, eh, it's, and my friend was like, don't care, like, don't look at what they're telling you. Don't look, like, what am I trying to say? Don't pay attention to the traction in the beginning stages. Right. It'll pay off. You just have to keep posting and see what people engage with. Um, but LinkedIn has been, like, a really good tool for me, and I love LinkedIn. <laughs> I love it. I mean, you, you see the feedback, too. You get the mm -hmm. engagement. I mean, it's it's... It's it's definitely something I think Juan posts what, like five yes. things a day. You got four, four oh my god, I love day. it. I four love his five. content. Wow, I, I he, he's up there. Right? I mean, Juan's and it's 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 funny because we you know again in the insurance space and we did it very strategic for our end because mm -hmm. we compete against a lot of the the publicly owned companies, right? And there's so much red tape that they can't even they just can't right. So we we tend to like even hammer down more. Yeah, we'll double down, double down, and, and and get that attention that way. It's smart. And even like when I started posting on LinkedIn, I used to have some of my older friends in corporate be like, "Oh, that's kind of inappropriate." And again, I hate being told what to do when it comes to like my freedom, my Tell creative me, yeah, freedom. Yeah. Oh my God. So I would intentionally, that's why I started dancing. And I was like, you know what? I normally just post this on Instagram, but I'm gonna try it on LinkedIn. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> and people still I, engage with it. I love that. I love that. Because I was like, cause basically, I feel like when you say that you can't do XYZ on XYZ platform, you, within limits and within reason, of sure. course, you're telling that person like they can't be genuinely who they are. And that's a problem because it, that's all about sales. Correct. No, no. Being And then then you lose the authenticity. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I think then that really loses the ability to connect with people. I agree. With if that's what the intention is. I agree. You know, so that's, it's really, that's not the purpose. And right. usually the, the people telling you that aren't doing it either. I know they're not. You know, it's they're, easier. And like, it makes them, because you can't like, People can't help who they are, right? And sometimes that's okay if you project your insecurities onto other people. Just be aware that, you know, your opinion isn't always wanted. Right. <laughs> but I'm glad. Thank you for sharing. Right. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still not going. I know. <laughs> let, let me ask you, as far as the, the, the connecting, how much is it, like, your mindset of being able, because obviously there's multi multiple levels, right, yeah, to what you're doing now. What, what's the advice? Like, obviously, you're not making it by yourself, putting other people first, but... What would be the advice for other people and, and why you should be a connector? Call it connector in chief, right? Yeah. That's, uh, Ooh, yes. uh, uh, that's our buddy Saif. You know, he's yeah, Saif is a connector he, he, we, of we're, all things. He's he's we're you know we're playing on we're in the second we're in the second level. This guy's number one. Yeah, he but, is. But how much of it? Because it's 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 a more it's an indirect sale, right? Mm -hmm. You're selling yourself, selling your value, yeah. connecting others, and that energy is kind of coming back. But what's what's your advice for someone to have that kind of mindset? How do you shift that? Oh my God. So there is my favorite book in the world is called The Go-Giver and it's by Bob Berg and John Mann. Um, they're my favorite. Hi guys. Um, <laughs> so they have this book and one of the prime laws is always give more in value than you receive in payment. And that's always how I've operated, but they articulated it in a way that I was like, holy crap, this you is that You can digest it. Mm -hmm, exactly. And so that's just been my methodology. Like how I will, so I have my calendar available for 20 minute, like virtual cafecitos. Nice. Um, and that, in that time, I will do whatever I can to help you, to connect you either to a resource, to a person or to a platform that can help. And so in terms of the advice that I would give, it's like, you never know what will come from a connection, whether you get a sale, which is not my intention, but whether you 
have the intent of selling to somebody directly, it's not going to nine times out of 10, you won't get it up front. Right. You'll get it on the back end and sure. it'll always come around. And so that's just that's my methodology. It's like. If I can give you value and if I can do anything in my power to help you, I'm going to. And that's what I encourage other people to do because it's not always about just like the immediate. You have to think of the long term. Well, let me say, has your, have you always had that mindset? Always. My so, dad, my dad instilled that in me very early, uh, very early. He always said, take care of people and people will take care of you. It's such a, you would, you would assume that that's which is a great message. And I feel like I'm the same way as well. Mm -hmm. trying to no, I get that vibe from, we, I got that from me the first time. No, which is, well, thanks. I mean, but it's true. I mean, that, that's exactly, and I think that's why we connected so well. Yeah. We, in the first five seconds, like I understand. Um, but it's, 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 and I, I kind of get frustrated a lot with people are like, nice guys finish last, right? Look out for yourself. Um, it, it's like the, everyone's so guarded and I understand that, but it, it just seems like it's so exhausting. I had a very close friend tell me um, that you can't become, you can't do well by doing good. And I called BS 100%. And it affected me because I, at first it did cause me to, to second guess like my approach to life. But now I'm like, no, I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. I'm definitely doing the right thing. I don't believe that. Like it all depends on your approach to life, right? And, and your strategy behind the nice guys finish last. You can be nice, but you can also be assertive and aggressive when you need to be. Right, right. And that's where I feel like there's a good balance to be had always. I, I'm well. First, I, I, I'm excited for you and what you're doing. Like you're gonna. You. I mean, you're always gonna kill it, right? So, um, I appreciate you. I, I think if anybody's not, they need to like follow you and anything I can do to help you. Thank you. I'm gonna do that, and it's. I'm excited to see kind of where you're going in the next step. And then, oh my god, I and know. That, me and too. I, I'm excited. I'm excited. And, I, and now when I hashtag, you know, founder and we can talk, like I feel a little more inclusive, right? Because that's- Yeah, uh, you break, are a founder. I know, but breaking down the barrier, no, I, 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 I take pride in being able to know, you know, a little bit about a lot, right? No, I'm not an expert course. in any means, but but just like you're, you're, you're so articulate and you're breaking the walls, you're giving people opportunities. Mm -hmm. So kudos to you Thank and uh, you. You, you have our support 100%. Thank you so much. I love you guys. I like genuinely do. And thank you, Juan. <laughs> <laughs>